President Trump has long vowed to institute a process of what he calls extreme vetting for refugees from predominantly Muslim countries. But as World News Tonight anchor David Muir found out, that vetting process can already be very rigorous. David followed refugee families along their journey from Amman, Jordan, to new homes and communities across America to learn about their experience firsthand. There is anger and confusion around the country in the wake of President Trump's controversial travel ban. Donald Trump has got to go. With the stroke of a pen on Friday, the president's executive order suspended the decades-old refugee resettlement program for 120 days and indefinitely banned all Syrian refugees. Is this the Muslim ban? We're talking about, no, it's not the Muslim ban, but it's countries that have tremendous terror. The president and promising this. We're going to have extreme vetting in all cases, and I mean extreme, and we're not letting people in if we think there's even a little chance of some problem. But the president's critics argue the vetting already in place was more than sufficient. What do we want? Justice! In 2016, more than 12,000 Syrian refugees were admitted to the U.S. Before the election, we traveled to Amman, Jordan, to see just what the vetting entailed. Here in Jordan, across the Syrian border, there are more than 600,000 Syrian refugees. And despite the backlash back in the U.S., so many of them are still desperate for the chance to go to America. And through this doorway, we immediately discover a crush of humanity. Refugee families already screened by the U.N. Now waiting to be interviewed by the U.S. How many interviews? Four interviews. Actually, five. Five interviews. So they come through here? Yes. Gina Kasim is with the U.S. State Department. And they're brought into a security screening area. For a vetting process that can last two years. We are taken to a hallway lined with small rooms. And through the windows, we can see family after family being interviewed. How can you possibly learn everything about a family through an interview? I'd say that the interviewers are very highly trained. They are trained to look at the documentation, but also for the credibility behind the applicant's story. When you say documentation, I mean, this is Syria. Mm -hmm. They've been at war for years now. Yes. What kind of documentation do they have, if any? Surprisingly, 97% of all adult applicants in our pipeline have valid Syrian documentation. From here, they are screened through the terrorist watch list. The intelligence database is back in the U.S. And Homeland Security makes the final decision. Are there times when, when it will flag you to a particular family and they get pulled? Absolutely. The applicants are actually at the airport and we've had to prevent them from boarding the plane. The U.S. State Department told us that of the more than 800,000 refugees admitted to the U.S. since 9-11, a, quote, tiny fraction of 1% have been arrested or removed because of terrorism concerns. Critics say that's still too many. They point to the case of these Iraqi refugees in Bowling Green, Kentucky, who the FBI caught in 2011 attempting to buy an anti-aircraft missile they thought would be used against American forces in Iraq. They were known insurgents who had fought against U.S. soldiers, but still slipped through the cracks. After that incident, President Obama drastically curtailing the number of Iraqi refugees coming into this country for six months. The vetting procedures overhauled. Those enhanced measures were firmly in place last year when we met these families who had just been cleared for America. This is cultural orientation, where they're taught about their new home. The teacher asks them what's allowed in the U.S. and what's forbidden. She shows them a picture of a couple kissing in public. She asks them about drinking in America. And then she asks about okay. polygamy, <laughs> asking if it's legal in America. <laughs> they begin to clap. The next lesson about America, the melting pot. They're asked a simple question. Which of these faces are American? Denzel Washington, Beyonce. These families leaving within days. How many of you are excited to go to the United States? Give me one word that describes America to you. The land of chances. The land of chances. For Americans who are worried about refugees coming to the U.S., 
We are humans like you. We want to be one of you. And we wondered if they had any questions for us. في حال فاز دونالد ترامب بالانتخابات شو بدنا نحن انه احنا نضل هنيك ما بصير رجعنا او ياذينا هنيك we'll take that question with us back to the united states all the families in this room have already been admitted to the united states but there are thousands of others now stuck in limbo this is the oval office just last week i asked president trump about the critics who say his ban will only inflame tensions both here in this country and overseas are you at all concerned it's going to cause more anger among Muslims around the anger. world. There's plenty of anger right now. How can you have more? You don't think it'll look, exacerbate look, David, the problem? David, I mean, I know you're a sophisticated guy. The world is a mess. The world is as angry as it gets. It was during our trip we found another family in Amman who had been waiting nearly two years for an answer. Their home bombed in Syria. They show me their homemade swing in the hallway. The children miss their playground back home. This is your playground? Yes. The U.S. State Department then tells them they're next. And on September 6th, you will travel to Kansas City, Missouri. We watch as it sets in. And then a question from their father, Mustafa. We show them on a map. Kansas City is a beautiful city. It's a beautiful city. And the baseball team, they won the World Series. A smile from the son who loves sports, but we notice tears from one of the children. Her mother tells us she is sad to leave her friends yet again. Since our trip, we have followed their story. They arrived here in the U.S. in September to a warm welcome from their new community. And since then, Mustafa has landed a full-time job at a local auto parts factory. The kids are thriving in school, but he knows he may not be able to share this promise of a better life with relatives who have yet to arrive. An uncertainty now shared by thousands of refugees who had pinned their hopes on a new beginning in the United States. For Nightline, I'm David Muir in New York.